We have set up backend and frontend for the main stack application in the previous episode. In this episode, we are going to see how to set up development environment for both Angular and also Node.js backend. So if you look at this diagram, we have Angular application running on port 4200 and the Node.js backend is running on port 3080. So when we create, when we created Angular application, so we used Angular CLI, so which internally uses Webpack dev server. And whenever you make any changes, you don't have to configure any extra package. All we need to do is you just need to hit the save button and you will, your changes will reflect on the UI. So no need to configure anything because we are using CLI. It's out of the, bo out of the box functionality. So when it comes to the backend, it doesn't work that way. So we have to configure some additional package for the for the files to be monitored and also reflect those changes without restarting any server at all. So for that we use NodeMon. So so that is how we set up a development environment for the main stack. There are so many ways, but uh, this is the way we are following in this episode. And let's get into implementation. Okay, let's open our setup where we we are maintaining two folders. One is for backend and another is for frontend. Let's change our directory into UI and start the application. Once you start the application, Angular builds the application and start in development development mode and it's on it's on the port 4200. Let's change the port here and reload the browser. As you can see, Angular app running on port 4200. Now let's open app component and change something. As soon as you change, uh, you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is save hit button. Uh, your changes will reflect on the browser. I'm just uh, I, I'm just copying the same heading uh, two times. So as soon as you save, you can see uh, that there are some changes on the terminal and also you can see that change on the browser as well. So uh, Angular CLI uses Webpack, Webpack dev server internally and Webpack dev server monitor the files and it will change accordingly. Now let's open a separate terminal and let's get into API and start the server. So our API server is running on port 3000. Let's make sure it is working fine by uh, reloading the browser. Yep, it's working fine. So now we have API and we have Angular application running on different parts. And in API, there is no mechanism where it watches the files and reloads the server automatically. For that mechanism, we need to install this NodeMon package. Let's copy this install command. So since we are using this package only for the development, we need to install this as a dev dependency. As you can see, it gets added to dev dependencies, not the actual dependencies. In case you wonder, dev dependencies is not part of the actual build uh, that goes to production. So uh, let's, Let's go to the package.json. Instead of start command, let's copy that. Since our API is running on port 3000, we have to change the port and also we have to change the main file, which is index.js. Let's make those changes and restart the, run the, run the command, npm star. As you can see, we are seeing the output of nodemon where it watches all the files and also it is starting index.js. So as you can see, if you change anything now, all you need to do is save it and reload the URL in the browser. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to stop the server and restart the server again and again. Yes. And there are so many configuration that you can maintain. 
um, it is very difficult to put all the configuration flags in the in the command or um, in the in the start script so that's why there is another provision in nodemon where you can maintain all that configuration in a separate json file so we can create nodemon.json file and in json you can you can put all that configuration so i'm i'm just testing only two commands here i'm not going to go through all the configuration options that that is available on nodemon so we can check the package so we are using watch and a delay so right now we are changing something since it's one second you don't see um, since the delay is one second you don't notice the gap and also when you go to the package.json let's let's change the five seconds and change something it is we're noticing uh, it is watching immediately so i think i think in the package.json we need to remove since we are using nodemon.json um, in the package.json we have to remove all that we can just keep nodemon let's go to package.json let's remove all this okay now we have removed and we have a delay of five seconds right now it it is taking all the configuration from nodemon.json so we whenever we save something it waits for five seconds and restart the server this is very useful this feature is very useful when we are in the beginning stage of our development that way it doesn't reload every time you hit some key on your keyboard Okay, that is how we set up a development environment for the main stack where we are maintaining separate folders. One is for API, another is for UI. And also we are maintaining two terminals so that we can monitor or we can start, start both UI and backend on a separate terminals in respective ports. So that way we can make our development faster and easier and as you can see, we are maintaining two folders here. Uh, there are so many variations. You don't have to maintain two folders, one, uh, one for each, uh, backend and frontend. And this is how I maintain. So it's up to you. You can you can have the root folder and, and you can maintain one UI as well. But uh, there will be some issues with the node modules where, because node modules for backend and frontend will be different. That's why I prefer to maintain two separate folders in case in the future if you want to separate your mean stack application it will be all you need to do is move the folder from one place to another place so it will be easier to maintain thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe